Hey there everybody, this is Franco and this video is going to be about spindle control on the PM728VT milling machine. So if we step on over here to the Centroid Acorn board, which is what I'm going to be using to uh, do the uh, CNC control on this conversion, there's basically three things you gotta contend with here when you're doing CNC control. First of all, you need the feedback. That's what this is. This is the DB9 connector where you connect your encoder. That's what tells the centroid acorn the velocity and the position of the spindle. This is a 0 to 10 volt analog output. This is what we use to control the uh, the, the, the velocity of the spindle, right? So 0 is stop, 10 volts is like full speed, and that's basically how that works. Then over here are the relays, and that is how you do forward, reverse, stop, basically, on your spindle control. So that's the acorn side of it. That's fairly simple. Over here, in the uh, machine side of it, it's a little bit more complicated, and, but not much. So the first thing we got to talk about before we talk about any kind of wiring is the encoder, right? So where are we going to, how are we going to uh, get that encoder feedback? I never put the encoder on the PM25 MV because I never could find a good place to mount it. But as I was standing out here the other day looking at this thing, I realized that this right here, where I uh, put this bushing, which if you watched my other videos, you know why that bushing is there. I just I realized that that is like a perfect place to get uh, spindle feedback. So what I'm doing, I'm actually I'm actually 3D printing it right now. I'm printing a new version of this this bushing spacer thing uh, that will basically when I go to CNC, I disable the use of the quill. So what I do is I, I retract the quill all the way, I lock it in position, I shove this bushing in here. It kind of like it jams this all up, so it it gets it takes that here. Listen. Hear that little bit of toggle? That that's normal. That's the clearance between the drive shaft and what drives it. That's what you need in order to have quill motion. I don't want quill motion. I'm going to disable it. So the bushing I I'm printing right now is going to be a little bit bigger. It's going to wedge in here, take that little bit of toggle out of it, but it's also going to have a, uh, a groove in it for a belt. And what I'm going to do, haven't figured it out yet, but I'm going to mount the encoder up here and have a little belt that goes between this bushing and a little pulley on the encoder. And that's how I'm going to get the spindle feedback on this machine. So this is great. Uh, it's really cool the way this machine is configured. You have you actually have a good place to mount uh, the encoder, or at least it looks like I have a place to mount the encoder. We'll see how it actually pans out, but that's what I'm thinking. So the encoder, we're good there. Next is the electronics. So what I've done here is I've very carefully just opened up the cover and, you know, the disclaimer, I have to give it, uh, electronics are very dangerous. You can kill yourself. I am not an expert on anything, so, um, you know, consult an electrician or whatever before you make decisions. Um, okay, there we go. We got that out of the way. Now that we all know that I'm not an expert, I'm going to tell you what I plan on doing here. So inside, under the hood, first things first. Uh, you can't, hard to see down in here, but I can tell you the electronics in this are, are really nice. I can I can see these are like uh, nice modern uh, electronics. You know, everything in there looks to be like the latest and the greatest versus some of the other machines that I've, I've messed around with. You could tell they're using circuit boards and designs that have been around forever. This seems to be, you know, newer, better stuff. Uh, other thing I like, the forward and reverse switch here. If you look at the back of this, and I'm going to try to point this out as best I can. Um, right here. Basically what you have here, it's really simple. Um, it's, it's just two switches. Let's see if I can get this out of the way. So this is really easy to kind of conceptualize. Um, on this side of it, you know, you can see it's jumpered together on this side. And then down here you have, I think it's wires number five and six. And what happens, I'm going to try to turn this and you'll see what happens. That's neutral, or stop. And that is, that's, that's reverse. Reverse, stop.
stop, forward, stop, reverse, stop, forward, stop, right? So basically what this is, is this is just two, two switches. And that is really easy to um, conceptualize when you are in the process of like converting that over to relay logic. So in another, another video, I'll show you how I'm going to wire all that up. Uh, I'm going to use two relays to basically uh, replace those two switches. And there's a, there's a way you can do that. There's a way you can wire those relays up so you're guaranteed it's physically impossible for you to ever have both of them turned on at the same time. And that's the same function that this mechanical switch does. So there you go. That is the uh, off and on or forward stop reverse part of the spindle. Now the final part of it is the speed control. And that's what this variable resistor or rheostat or whatever you want to call this thing does, right? So what I've done here is very carefully I've connected um, my alligator clips onto the three, the three, um, what would you say, connections on this pot. So there's, uh, they label it, you know, seven, eight, nine are the wires. Uh, the black is seven, the yellow is eight, and the nine is red. And I'm going to show you here what I've done. So the positive side of my Multimeters on uh, the middle terminal, which would be eight. I, I think that's called the wiper. I can't remember. And then the black, my black negative side is on number seven. So what what's going on here? I have to turn the machine on to show you this. So let me just go ahead and do this. Here again, this is very dangerous. You should not do this, but I'm going to do it. Uh, so there we go. Power's on. And we can see there's some lights and stuff in there. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to turn this on. All right, so right now there's zero volts. But this, this wire is actually carrying five volts, but we're not connected to that. So there's five volts going into the into the into this and then what this is going to do is it's going to vary the signal between 0 and 5 volts to control the spindle speed. So let's just show you what happens here. So as I turn this knob, right, spindle, spindle turns. Okay, so here we go. 0 volts. As I turn the spindle on, voltage starts to increase. So I'm turning the knob, voltage increases. So we're at like 11.11 right now, 1.22. So let's just say there is two and a half volts. I am at 2300 RPM. Crank it up. Almost 5 volts. I'm at 4300 RPM. And of course, as I slow it down, see what happens. Perfect. All right, there you go. So that is, that's part number one of uh, what we have to do here to uh, convert this thing over to CNC. So I feel like there's a, uh, a pretty clear path forward uh, for wiring this thing up and uh, having the ability to do full CNC control for the spindle on the PM728VT. All right, stay tuned for more of this. Thanks a lot.